Hello, in this video we're going to talk about vectors. This is just an introduction to the basics of location and normal vectors and how to move things with, there, with them. This is required for understanding how to use them with look at functions. In this video, I'm not going to go into advanced topics like trigonometry with vectors, matrices, coordinate spaces, cosine, sine, tangent, dot, and cross products. I'm not going to talk about those because the look at functions do those things mostly by themselves. So we don't really need that. So this is just an introduction to know enough to use those functions. If you want to skip to any specific topic here, the video is going to be divided in chapters, so you can use those to skip. So let's get to it. What is a vector? A vector is just a group of numbers and we give meaning to that group of numbers. So for instance, in a real, we have a location, a rotation, a scale, and those are just group of three numbers each. We also have colors that can be three or four numbers, R, G, B, and alpha, red, green, blue, and alpha. There are just a group of numbers, but the type of them, like the, their usage, is what changes, is what defines how we are supposed to use them, what are we going to use them for and how, what math are we supposed to do with them. So these things are very useful and think about that when you're naming a variable, what is this variable supposed to change when you change its values or how is it supposed to be used? And think about that if you're naming a vector specifically. All right, let's, let's talk about a position vector. So in real, the position or location vector, Unreal calls it location. They're just an X, Y, and Z group of numbers, and they represent the distance in each of those axes from the origin of the world. So the origin of the world, I have this actor here, the skylight, uh, representing where the 000 of the world is. 000 is the origin. So this cone is at 553 your unreal units away from x origin so x origin is this direction here as this red arrow is pointing if you forget which colors represent which directions you can just remember the sequence rgb red green blue xyz they match so r is x green is y and blue is e now 553 unreal units i'm gonna say centimeters because unreal units basically it represents centimeters. They mean that this cone is 553 53 centimeters away from the origin in the X axis. So now it is, let's put it on zero. Now it is on zero and it's exactly above this center line here. And you see it's zero from the origin in X, but not in the other axis. This means that it's not zero away from the origin in a single line distance. It's just in the x-axis distance. This is important. So now it's away from the origin minus 371 in y and 132 in z. So it means that it's a bit above. So in a real, the axes work like z goes up, x is forward and y is right. So if I look at things in this direction, and if you look at the bottom here, where these axes are, you will see that z points up, x is pointing forward, and y is pointing right. So that's important, because that's how Unreal calls these vectors when you get them from actors. Forward vector, right vector, and up vector. All right, so that's a location vector. Now, how can we manipulate this vector if we use addition and subtraction, we can move this location around by how much we add or subtract from each axis. So for instance, in this level's blueprint, I have on tick a function adding actor world offset to this cone. And I'm adding 50 on Z, so it's gonna go up, 
multiplied by delta seconds. Delta seconds is how many seconds passed between each frame on tick. And this means that every one second, I'm going to move 50 centimeters up. So let's save this. I'm going to simulate here. And this is not just playing. Simulation is different because you're not going to possess a character or something like that and play as that character in the world. It's like you're still in the editor. You can still select stuff and move them around. And that can be useful for debugging and seeing how values change or just changing properties of blueprints as, as you select them and change their properties, their values. All right, so I'm going to simulate and you see this triangle goes slowly up 50 centimeters every second. And that's how I'm doing that by adding to it with this add actor world offset. So this is not me doing an addition. This is just multiplying the value by delta seconds. So in the end, it's 50 centimeters every second. But that act actor world offset is doing an addition. It gets the current location of the actor and adds the delta. Delta is just a difference in values from, or from the original value to the result. The difference is the delta. So I'm passing to Mario, hey, I want this difference. I want 50 centimeters multiplied by delta seconds, every frame added to this actor. So it's moving the actor up. Now, if we multiply a location, this is not really used because when you multiply a vector, you're just multiplying, you can multiply by another vector and it's going to be what you expect. You're just going to be multiplying each axis by each axis on the other vector. Like there's not a lot of use to that. When you use it, when you do multiplication with vectors, usually you're going to be multiplying the whole vector by, by a single float. To create these multiply nodes to multiply by a float value, you can drag a line from the vector, type multiply, and hit enter. And then you right click the other pin, convert pin, float. Now you have float single precision and double precision. That's because in real five, you now have double precision floats that allow much higher values. So we can go way further from the world without things getting glitchy. But when multiplying by a vector that is a location, which is already in double precision, whichever you choose here, Unreal is going to convert internally to double precision to multiply by that location. So the result's still going to be in double precision. Just to save the processing time, which it doesn't make a big difference, but just to save it from the conversion, I'm going to use double precision here. And that's how you multiply a vector by a float in Unreal 5. So I have this multiplication and every frame I'm multiplying the location of this actor by 0 0.99. And then I, I update its location by using set actor location. And that's the cone. Now what's this going to do is it's going to move the cone to the origin, little by little. Every frame, it's getting its location, all its components, X, Y, and Z. We call X's components as well. So all of its axes or components are being multiplied by 0 0.99 every frame. So it means they're slowly shrinking down to zero. And at some point, they're going to be so close to zero that floats are not precise anymore to multiply down. So you see the multiplication here stops changing the values and they're pretty much at zero. Like you can't really see the difference. If I round these to zero, there's no visible difference here. So that's what multiplying does. It's always going to go towards or far away from the origin in a straight line. So it's going to take the, take the shortest path to that origin. And it's not something I've ever had to do. So it's really not that useful. It's just good knowledge to have. Know what multiplication does to a vector. Now, what if we want to move something towards something else, not just to, towards the origin? For that, we use a vector that we call a direction vector. Think of this vector as a line in the world. And I have something here to represent that. So this vector will be a line. Let me put it above the cone. So they seem related to each other. It is a line that represents both the direction and the distance from one object to the other. In this case, this line is programmed to display the distance from the cone to the sphere. To calculate this vector, you subtract two locations. So I'm going to the source of this blueprint. 
you have to remember to always subtract the destination by the origin. So the actor end, in my case, which in the level, actor start is the cone, actor end is the sphere. So my line starts in the cone and ends at the sphere. Now, you subtract the start location from the end location. So this order is important. And you get the line that represents the direction among them, from, from origin to end. So if I move, let me simulate again and remove the function there that moves the cone. So if I move the cone around, you see that the line is changing size and direction. And its location in the world doesn't matter because this is not a vector that tells you where something is in the world. It only tells you the direction between two things and the distance between them. So if I move this sphere here, you're going to see the lines changing. If I move the cone, same thing. The line is just representing the offset from the cone to the sphere. If I make it short, if I bring them closer, it makes it shorter and further away makes it bigger and changes direction. Very simple. Then if you scale this vector, so let me select this and I have this scale value here. So if you scale this vector, you're going to see that it changes the size of this line. One is the original size because one multiplied by anything is equal to anything. So it's equal to the other value and values less than one shrink the line values bigger than one make the line longer. 0 0.5 is exactly half and so on. You can use that to move objects between two specific locations. So I have this blueprint called position between targets and I have a pretty similar setup to that vector preview blueprint. It has an actor origin, an actor of destination. So the origin is again the cone, destination is the sphere and a normalized location. Normalized uh, dimensions are when you have a value that goes from zero to one in a specific region. So let's say from the cone to the sphere, the cone would be zero and the sphere is one. No matter the distance among them, if I am having a normalized value to represent a location in between them, normalized meaning it goes from zero to one. So I have the normalized location setting here in my preview actor and 0 0.5, leaves this actor exactly in between the cone and the sphere. Zero moves it to the cone. And something very interesting is when you multiply a direction vector by negative values, you keep the same straight line that you had before, but you invert the direction. So minus one is the exact same distance from the cone to the sphere, but on the opposite direction. So remember that that's also very useful. Multiplying a direction vector by a negative value flips the direction while keeping the exact opposite direction that it was going before. Now, one of the big differences between this line preview and this sphere here that I'm using to display movement between two things is that when I'm simulating, the sphere is going to follow both differences in location from the cone and from the sphere. It's not like my line preview there that just stays in place. So how am I accomplished to move the sphere in between these two actors? Let's see the source. So I have this update position function that I'm calling on tick. And first I check if the two actors are valid, the origin and the destination. Then I get their location. I subtract the origin location from the destination location, the end location to get the direction vector. So this subtraction here is the direction vector. It has the direction and the distance that they are from each, from each other. And then I multiply by the normalized location. So if I multiply by one, this is just the distance as it is. If I multiply by 0 0.5, it's half of the distance between them. Now having just this one position my sphere in the correct spot, let me show you. This is, it's good to make mistakes to learn from them. So if I play, Where's the sphere? So you see the sphere is somewhere over here. Then when I move the cone up and down, now the cone 
is the origin and it goes towards the sphere. And the sphere is going down from the cone. So my sphere is going down from the center of the world. You see the position of my sphere here is minus 66 on Z, which means it's going down. The origin of the world here is where is the vector that i have to represent the origin here so the origin of the world is here let me get this guy here so that it stays visible while simulating all right so my cone there represents the origin of the world and as you can see if i move the cone up the sphere goes down because the offset from the cone to the sphere goes down and that's what i'm setting to my sphere you go towards the offset and a certain percentage of that offset of that direction normal so the normalized location here is 0 0.5 if i move it to one it's, it's gonna go from the origin all of the distance that is from the sphere to the cone from the cone to the sphere and zero it's gonna stay in the origin because i'm just multiplying that direction vector by zero so every every one of each of its axes becomes zero and minus uh, negative values are going to go in the opposite direction. But we don't want that. We want it to be between the cone and the sphere. Now for that, we add. Now this is where add is useful. Let me close the vector visualizer. We add to that offset the location of the origin. So the location of our cone. I'm, so I'm getting this normalize location after multiplying to scale it and adding it to the actor location of the cone. If I use that to set the sphere actor location, you're going to see that now the sphere sits between the cone because I'm getting the location of the cone and adding to it that offset that we calculated from the cone to the sphere. And that's how you position something in between two things and you can even move it from one location in the world to the other. And if I had like something on tick that adds this offset times 0 0.01 over time to this actor, it would slowly move towards the other actor. So that's a way of moving things towards a certain location. There is an easier way to do this without computing the direction vector or the offset, which is using a LERP. So if I drag a line from this type, lerp unreal gives me this lerp vector node and the lerp vector will do exactly what we're doing here but with a single node and the less nodes you have in blueprint the better uh, for performance of course so from a is the origin so the other one and b is the destination and then the alpha is just the normalized value from one to the other so zero means a one means b so it's exactly how we're using, we're using here our normalized location. So you're going to see that lerping does the exact same thing. I just wanted you to see what's the actual math that's done to accomplish this. And sometimes you don't need a lerp. You need to actually do the math by yourself to change something that's happening in the math. But the result is exactly the same. Minus one goes to the other direction because lerping allows lower than zero and higher than one values. And one goes towards the sphere. And if you do like, 1.5, it's going to go even further. Another thing is if you just want the center location between a bunch of locations, not just two of them, this is really cool. You just add all those locations. So I could just add the location of the cone plus the location of the sphere. And you divide by the number of locations that you added. So in this case, two, I would add them and divide by two. If I had three things, I could position something exactly in the center of those three things by adding those three locations and dividing by three and so on. So that's a very, very fast way of centering something exactly in the middle among two or several locations. Now, what if I wanted to move this sphere from the cone to the sphere here, the small sphere, with a specific distance, not a percentage of the distance between them? Because right now, the sphere is at 0 0.5 from the cone to the sphere. And no matter how much I move these two, it's always going to be at 0 0.5, at half of the distance between them. Now, what if I want the sphere to be going towards the small sphere to be going towards the big sphere, but in a specific, at a, at a specific length and a specific distance, every frame, not a percentage of the distance of these two. For that, you need a way to have only the direction without the distance in your offset vector. 
And that's what we call a normal. A normal is a vector that represents a direction without any size. The, its size is 1 because you can multiply it by anything and get that result. So if you have a vector of size 1 and you multiply it by 10, now it's a vector of size 10 because 1 multiplied by anything is equal to anything. So how do you make a normal vector after calculating the direction? For this one, I have the option here to use distance, but it's currently not working. I need to do, uh, I need to do the math and let's show you how to do it. So I'm going to stop the simulation to edit the blueprint. Let's delete the slurp here. Um, all right. So I'm going to have a branch and if my option to use distance is false, it's going to keep doing what it was doing right now. It's going to use the normalized location percentage between the two actors. But if we do use the distance, let's connect these. It means we're going to normalize this direction and distance vector. So the subtraction between uh, from destination, subtraction from yeah, of origin from destination, we're going to normalize this. Yep. So now the result here keeps the same direction as it had before, but it's of size one. We're going to use this and multiply by the exact distance that we want. So we'll multiply as before, right click here, convert pin, float double precision, and multiply by the distance that we want. So this is gonna move the sphere in the direction between the origin and destination actors by the exact distance that we say, that, that we tell it to. So use distance. And now distance is zero, so the sphere is sitting inside the cone. And I increase the distance. Oops, actually, see, this is a good mistake to make. I'm increasing the distance here, and it is moving in the correct direction, but from the origin of the world. What did I forget here? I forgot to add to the location of the cone, so that it moves from the cone. This is just the offset amount in this uh, as this distance but not going from the cone so after calculating the offset we add the location of the cone and then we compile save and there we go now the sphere is gonna be moving let's say one meter so 100 centimeters from the cone to the sphere no matter the distance between these two uh, simulate no matter the distance between these two. So, no matter where the sphere is, the big one is, the small one's going to be moving from the cone to the sphere. Just a hundred meters. And then we could have some game logic that makes it move a specific amount of distance every frame. So, for instance, if you have an object, an actor, a car or something that can only move a certain speed at a time, this is how you would be able to do that. You want to make it go towards a certain direction at a specific speed. This is how you do it. You get the normal of that direction by normalizing the offset between origin and destination. And then you multiply that normal by the distance you want. And you add that to the current location. So it offsets that location towards that direction with that distance. Now, when you have a normal vector, if you look at its axis values, so I'm going to select my vector preview here. And I'm going to normalize it. So now it's normalized. It's always going to be pointing from the cone to the sphere as before, but it's normalized. Its size is always one. So this yellow value that I have here is the size of this vector. If I set it back to not normalized, you're going to see that it's always displaying the distance from, oh, and also if I don't scale it, it's the distance between the cone and the sphere. I can make it smaller, I can make it bigger. When I normalize it, it's always one. So that's a normal vector. Now, when you look at the values in a normal vector, you're going to see that the bigger values are the direction it's pointing at the most. So let me try to make it point straight at Y here. So minus Y because Y is to the left of the screen here and I'm making it go to the right. 
So this is minus y. And you can see that one is minus, uh, that y here is minus one, the green value. If I move it up, you're gonna see that the green value starts to, to shrink. And then the blue value starts to grow. When it gets straight up, or as close as I can to that, the other values, x and y, are almost zero, and the z value is one. That means it's pointing straight up. And same thing if I make a point straight at x, or negative x, minus one in the side, on this side, and almost zero to the other ones. When you have a, a diagonal, nothing's gonna be one. And if it is like perfect 45 degrees, which means pointing as much to the left as it is to the top, you're not going to see 0 0.5 here. And that may sound weird at first, but that's because these are cosines. I'm not going to go too deep into cosine, sine, and things like that. But just so you know, a cosine can give you a, an angle if you get the arc cosine from it. So what a normal vector gives you, if you do this math, is the angle that this normal is from a certain axis. So this normal is at I have the option to display the results with that math, is at roughly 138 degrees from the x-axis, because the x-axis actually points to the other way. So if I make it roughly 45 degrees here, you can see it's close to 45 degrees, pointing in that direction. Up the arrow. Here you can see that if I have the display angle option enabled, I am displaying on each of those labels, I get from the normalized vector, so this means I got that offset from the two actors and normalized it. On each axis, I am getting its arcosine value, so this is when you want to do it, I have to stop simulate. Arc cosine, or maybe acos. Okay, so this is the shorthand name, and that's how Rio does it. So you get ACOS, and I can, you can get the result in radians or degrees. Radians is usually used with other trigonometry math, but just for displaying, I am using degrees. So that's why there's the small d here. I'm getting the R cosine of each of these axes, and this gives me the angle that those cosines value, cosine values represent. So this is an interesting way to get the angles from a normal vector. The angle from each independent axis, so the angle from x, the angle from y, and the, the angle from z. Now, you might be asking, what does all this have to do with look at functions and rotations? We're going to need to get the right normals in order to set certain look at rotation, in order to use certain functions. So to do that from an actor, you can use, let's go to my experimentation blueprint here, the level blueprint gonna leave the cone and let's say no matter what it what the rotation of the cone is I want it to move towards its tip so we have a cone to get its tip the tip is the upside of the cone so we ask Unreal real for its up vector every actor has a get up vector function uh, actually, get actor up vector. Every component also has one. So if I get the static mesh from this actor, static mesh. It's so hard to get this one. There we go. So if I get the static mesh component, you can also get up vector from it. So you see the target of these functions is actor and scene component. So they both have these. And also, if you have a rotation of something, so let's get the actor rotation. You can also get these vectors, not just up. You can get like, let me show the three of them. Forward vector and right vector. So you see from rotations, you can also get these vectors. And from rotations, it's also useful because uh, in a rotation, in a real, let's rotate this guy here. And if you select local space on the gizmos here at the top, you're gonna see that Z is now in the diagonal because the cone is rotated. 
So its axis rotated with its rotation. Now forward is pointing kind of down and up is pointing kind of forward. So it's important if you want to know these vectors up, forward um, and right, including the current rotation of the object, you can either get it from its rotation. I keep going to the wrong blueprint. You can either get it from its rotation or from one of its components or from the actor itself. Now let's move this cone up. Add actor offset. So I'm going to move it towards its up vector. And this is a normal, so this means its size is one. So the distance you would move every frame is just one. Let's say I wanted to move more. So I wanted to move. Let's make this a number because I'm scaling a normal vector. Let's move it up by 50 centimeters. And not every frame, every second. So to do that, we can, uh, if you just connect another type of value, like this is a float, into one of these pins, it converts automatically. So now I'm moving 50 centimeters towards the up of this actor every second. Let's compile that and let's simulate. So the, the cone is going to be moving that direction. If I change the cone rotation, it's going to be moving in the direction its tip is at. Ah, this does this nothing because this is just twisting. But like doing this, I'm changing the rotation of the yaw value. And you can see it's always moving in the direction I'm retaining it to. And this is how, when you have a character in your world, and you push forward, it moves always forward towards the way you are looking at. Because you do that by getting the forward of the camera and moving the actor in that direction. Not just any forward, it's the forward of the camera. And when you push to the sides, it go it's going to move right or left of the camera, not the character or the world. But if we only have up, right and forward vectors, how do you move left? Well, remember when I said that you, if you multiply a direction by a negative value, you invert that value? That's how you do it. So I could add a pin here and multiply by minus 1, but I can just invert one of the values. If I move it by minus 50 on the up vector, instead of moving up, it's going to move down from its inverted up vector. So that's how you can move an actor, uh, a character in any look, in any direction, depending on where the camera is looking at. So now that you have an understanding of the location, direction, and normal vectors, we can talk about the look at functions in real and how to use them to make an actor always point towards some other actor. So for instance, I have this actor here always pointing towards uh, its y axis, always pointing towards the cone, and its x-axis is always trying to be aligned with the sphere. But y is always pointing to the cone. And there are many ways uh, in Unreal to do look at rotations. This is just one of them using the make rod functions. And on my next videos, I'll teach you how to use find look at rotation. So it's still pointing to the cone. Let me move it back a bit because it's going far. And find look at rotation, relative look at rotation, make rot, and look at function. I'm going to teach you about their limitations and whatnot. See you there.